In the last problem, we showed how uh, to get the electric flux through a plane such that the electric field was perpendicular to the plane and it was uniform. And we got the result that the electric flux is equal to the electric field times the area. And we said that the concept of electric flux can be thought of to be similar to the concept of number of electric field lines going through the surface. So a very simple question arises. What if we rotate the surface, keep the area the same size exactly, but just rotate the surface? What do you think would happen to the number of lines going through the surface? You can see intuitively that some lines that were going through the surface before are not going to be going through the surface when the area rotates. So you should expect that the number of lines going through the surface should decrease. If you look at the problem from a side view, so that means that this is the surface, but I'm looking from the side, so I only see a line. And the normal to the surface is this area vector, it's perpendicular to the surface, and the electric field is perpendicular to the surface, so this is what the surface looks like originally, before it's rotated. And when you rotate the surface, this is what it looks like. The area vector rotates, because the area vector always stays perpendicular to the surface. But you see that some electric field lines here that were going through the surface before it was rotated are not going through anymore because the surface has rotated a bit. So we expect again that the number of lines going through the surface should decrease. So we expect to get a decrease in the electric flux. Let's see how this works mathematically. So this is again the picture. You have the electric field, it's uniform. So if you evaluate the electric field at any point on the surface, it's the same vector exactly. The area vector is perpendicular to the surface at any point. If you want to calculate the total electric flux through this surface now after it's rotated, same idea as before, you're calculating the electric flux for each element of area and you're adding all the electric fluxes for each element of area, for all the elements of area, and you're taking the limit when the size of the area goes to zero. So that means you're getting E dotted into the area for every single element of area, and you're summing it over all the areas. Now, E dotted into the area is just E times the area times cosine of the angle between them. And since in this problem, particularly, the electric field was given to be uniform, so E is a constant. And now if you look at the angle theta, the angle theta between electric field and area, it's the same angle exactly for any element of area that you take when the area is, in, is inclined. So cosine theta is a constant. Theta is the same for every element of area. So I can take cosine theta and electric field outside of the summation. So you get this, E cosine theta times this quantity. Now what is this quantity? If you're just summing all the elements of area for the inclined plane. So obviously you're going to get the total area of the inclined plane. And the total area of the inclined plane is just A, so you get E A cosine theta. And you can see here now that the flux is getting smaller because when the area was, per when the electric field was perpendicular to the surface, the angle theta was zero. So as you rotate the area, the angle goes bigger than zero. And you know that the cosine function, when the angle increases above zero, it starts to decrease. So the cosine gets smaller. So when the area was exactly perpendicular to the electric field, the cosine was one. You got the maximum value of the electric flux. When you rotate the area, the angle increases and the cosine gets lower than 1 and so the total electric flux decreases, exactly as we expected when we thought about the problem in terms of number of field lines going through the surface. If you want to solve the problem using the integral approach directly, it's very simple. Integration of E dot dA becomes integration of E dA cosine theta. E cosine theta are constants. Take them outside of the integration. What's left over is integration of dA, which is the total area. So you get E A cosine theta exactly as we did for the limit of sums. Now, uh, this is the final result, as we said, E A cosine theta, and the flux is smaller. And that means that there are, intuitively to think about it, that there are some lines, electric field lines, not going through the area anymore because it's rotated. So you expect that the flux is getting smaller and the cosine term is the one that reflects that decrease in the electric flux. 
Okay, let's think about another problem, which we'll do in the next file. What if you make an inclined surface, but you extend the area, you don't keep the area the same value as before, but you extend the area such that you project it all the way back to this point, which is the projection which projects onto the, this point. So what I mean is that this inclined area no longer has the same size, it has a bigger size. Uh, and it's made specifically with a size such that when you go to every corner of this rectangle, it projects back onto the original surface. Now, do you expect that the electric flux through this inclined surface will be the same as the electric flux through the black back surface or not? This is the question. Think about it a little bit and we'll do it in the next file.